Mark Victor Hansen and I were the co-authors of the Chicken Soup to Soul books. And one day we decided, let's see if we could sell one million books in one day. No one had ever done that before. Harry Potter's done it since. And so we thought, let's just see if we could pull it off, just for the fun of it. Now, when we decided that, we sent out this intention. Every day we meditated, the two of us, and, and, and many of our staff would do it as well. So we're sending out this intention. And about 30 days after we decided this, Mark and I were at the American Booksellers Association Convention in Chicago at the McCormick Center, at the convention center there, and we're coming home on the bus. And I got on the bus, and he, I think he took a taxi that day, and I got on the bus, and I sat down next to this woman, and she said, you're Jack Canfield. I was feeling pretty cocky. Wow, she knows my name. <laughs> and then she said, you're wearing your name tag. She could tell I was <laughs> kind of doing that. And then she said, uh, you're the chicken soup guy, right? And I said, yeah. She said, what are you and Mark up to these days? I said, well, we just decided we could sell a million books in one day, and that's our goal now. She said, I can help you do that. As fast as I said it, she said, I can help you do that. I said, really? How would you help us do that? She said, well, I'm the buyer for the W.H. Smith bookstores. <laughs> now, half the airports in America have W.H. Smith bookstores in them. And she said, you know, we could do a signing in all the W.H. Smith bookstores. You have many co-authors that have helped you write your books, which we do. And she said, we could put them all like in Maine and, and uh, Boston and New York and Baltimore and Atlanta and Miami. We'll all start on the East Coast like at 6 in the morning doing signings. And we'll get you on planes. We'll fly you over to like Cleveland. And, you know, we'll just keep moving in Denver. And then eventually you'll be out in California by the time they're doing the nighttime traffic. And we'll get some hotels to work with this and an airline to work with this. And she said, I bet we could sell a million books in one day. And I said, wow, why would you want to do that with us? And that's when she called me dummy. <laughs> she said, dummy. She said, if I sold a million books through the W.H. Smith bookstores in one day, don't you think that'd make me look like a hero? And I said, got it. <laughs> you know? Now, a lot of people would say, wow, you were lucky. You got to sit next to her on the bus. I say, no, that was the law of attraction working. As soon as we sent out that vision and we had numerous people focusing on it and believing in it, then what happened is we aggregate and start to attract to us the people, the resources, the opportunities, the ideas, the money, et cetera, that will allow us to achieve our goals. Does that make sense? Yes. OK. See, and that's working all the time. That's working all the time, unless you enter in doubt. Have any of you seen these Bose noise reduction headphones? Now Panasonic makes them. There's a number of brands out there. And what happens is when you hear sound coming into the headphone, it cancels out the sound. How does it do that? Here's the wave coming in, and then it creates the opposite wave. So the two waves, here's one wave going up here, and it makes the other one down here. They collapse each other, and all of a sudden there's no sound. So when you have an intention and you enter in doubt, oh, I can't do that, I can't afford that, I'm not smart enough, I don't have a high enough IQ, I didn't meet anybody that can help me do that, etc. I didn't graduate from college, then what happens is that you are canceling out the signal. It's like static in the cell phone message. Does that make sense? Okay, so you want to eliminate doubt. 